All right, um, here with me, <laughs> I have JJ Kalau from Forbes. Um, welcome to Finland. <laughs> Thanks, it's great to be here. <laughs> So after the Yacht Week in New York, he decides to come to Cold Slush, which is great. Uh, you, write, <laughs> you write a lot about the US, and um, is, is the Nordics or Europe like now, do you feel some fresh wind coming in or something now that you're here? <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna use an anecdote that I, I just picked up from, from Will, who's in the audience over there, um, not paying attention. But so, so I, I do not pay attention to the Nordic countries or Finland or, or Europe in general, and I don't mean that as a slight at all. I, I just, it's not kind of my mandate. I'm supposed to cover startups and business in the US for the most part. Um, but um, I, I think coming here from the US, uh, a lot of people are very struck by how well all of these different entities are working together uh, in Finland. You know, the government, um, corporations like Nokia, and, and, and kind of companies that have made it, like Rovio and Supercell, and, and how enthusiastic they are, and, and how effective they've been in terms of actually seeding entrepreneurship and, and helping to grow that next crop of companies and that kind of, you know, that undergrowth. Um, and, and so Will, who, you know, runs a great company in the U.S., and, and he, he's, he's of the opinion that he's never seen anything like it and that it's really a model for the rest of the world, just in the way that the government um, and, and everybody's kind of aligned. And, 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 you know, the prime minister shows up here at a tech conference, which is, to me, just mind-blowing. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of clearly unbelievably positive things going on here. Uh, and and I, I, I think the world will begin paying attention very shortly. I think our prime minister was asked a few weeks ago, what's the best thing that he's done for startups so far? And he said, I, I got out of the way. Uh, but <laughs> what, you've been an entrepreneur yourself. Would you have wanted more support from governmental agencies or something like that in, while you were doing your, your company? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure it really would have applied to my company. We were in the minor leagues and, and nobody could have helped us. The, you know, President Obama couldn't have helped us. We, we were helpless. Um, we're hopeless. I'm sure he could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> that would have been nice. But I, you know, I have been in New York for a couple of years, and you know, six years ago, New York was a shadow of what it is today in terms of technology and, and startups and innovation. And a, a big part of that, and, and anybody you talk to in the city will tell you this: investors, entrepreneurs, um, you know, people from established kind of ad ad tech companies and, and finance companies, the, the Bloomberg administration has been a, a big part of that, just in terms of you know, not only the lip service that they give to it. I mean, they really, they put in the FaceTime, they, they show up to events, they, they're really behind it in terms of you know, an economic force to replace the finance industry, which is in decline. But they also are doing very real things to, to help that along. You know, they're creating development funds, they're, they're listening to what entrepreneurs need rather than kind of imposing you know, some, uh, some policy that doesn't make any sense for what's actually going on on the ground. Um, and, and they're very much in tune with, with you know, the needs of, of you know, to use a, a, a buzzword, like the ecosystem. But, um, and so I think government can play a role in that way, but it, it has to be more localized. Uh, and, and Finland can do that because it's a country of six million people and New York is a city of nine million people. So it, it, once you get bigger than that, it becomes a little bit tougher. But you know, it, when Mayor Bloom Bloomberg comes to your company or goes to 30 different companies and actually shows that they have a vested interest in, in this space, it, it makes a real difference in terms of morale. Um, and, and that, you know, that, that's, there's some, concrete positive benefits from that. What do you, what do you think are the best uh, attributes of New York to be an entrepreneur? Or what are, what are the things that you would definitely handpick and take with you? Yeah. Of the so, city itself or of anything that you can right. see in that ecosystem? Um, so the beauty of New York is that it's not 
kind of a one-trick town. You know, if you go to San Francisco, it's very homogenous in terms of the people you meet, uh, in terms of what everybody's dream is, and um, it's also all all guys, which is isn't good for anybody. But it's it, it's just it's tech and it's startups, and that's all there is. And. I love it how I asked about New York and you bring up San Francisco. Well, but okay. <laughs> there's an obvious, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's kind of the question, New York versus Silicon Valley or something. But, and, and look, Silicon Valley is great. A, a massive amount of the world's innovation comes from just this small, tiny area in the US and, and that should not be, you know, you, you don't want to downplay that. It, 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 Silicon Valley is, you know, it has that aura for a reason, and that's very real. But going to New York, I, I think, is, is very, in some ways, humbling, because there are all these different industries, and there are all these amazing people in, you know, a dozen different verticals, in fashion, and in media, and in advertising, and in finance, and there are all these um, industries that have, you know, that, that, is, that is the base. You know, that is the center of the universe for all of these different industries. So if you're trying to build a startup in one of those industries, it makes a lot of sense to be there rather than in Silicon Valley. So you can actually immerse yourself in that world rather than kind of, you know, make a product for some fantasy of what that world, you know, might be. So you feel it's like a more creative environment and that's where you get a difference. That's another part. Variety. So, right. I mean, if you're, <clears throat> if you're an advertising technology company, it makes a ton of sense to be in New York because Madison Avenue, you know, is still there. All the buyers are still there. It's just that's that is the you know the that's the center of the universe for that company. The same thing if you're in finance or in fashion or it, it, it just it has a lot of natural advantages over other places in the world that I think people are really starting to pay attention to. You write a lot about um, investment and VCs and everything like this in your blog. Uh, is that somehow a certain handpick? I mean, you wrote about music and hip hop as well, but more about this VC and money. Is that something that's like uh, in your focus or, or yeah. is that generally an interest? Are you gonna be an entrepreneur again or just? <laughs> Do I give off that vibe? <laughs> I, I don't know. I I don't mean, know. I, yes, I, I would love to be an entrepreneur again. Don't tell my editor that or anybody yeah. <laughs> in the media industry. So I can, I'll say that in Finland. I won't say that in New York. Um, but yeah, it, you know, venture capital. So if you cover startups, inevitably you kind of have to cover venture capital at some point because, you know, that's that's the fuel to grow these companies. And, and so that world is just intrinsically linked to you know the world of building companies, and, and there's no getting around that. And, I, and I, so you want to have a, a firm understanding of what venture capitalists are looking for and, and how they fund these companies and, and what their incentives are. Um, so yeah, that, that is absolutely something I cover and I'm interested in. Okay, you also wrote, uh, Steve Blank, a men dear mentor of mine as well, uh, he wrote with you about Demo Days being beauty contests. Do you sometimes feel that startups try to get media just for the sake of it, for the fame, and they try yeah. to put themselves on magazine covers or, or Forbes too many times, and then they just lose focus. I mean, that's also sort of beauty contents. What's yeah. So, I mean, Steve Blank is just full of, of wisdom. Um, I've covered him more than I should, probably. I, I'm becoming just like an advocate and a... Uh, and an acolyte more than more than a journalist in terms of Steve Blank, I, I would, Fan. or I'm in, at least in danger of that. Um, but he makes a, a good point in that he calls kind of Silicon Valley the new Hollywood, where we know who all of the stars in Silicon Valley are. You know Zuckerberg and um, and Mike Sistrom of Instagram and and whoever. You know Marissa Miller. It, we there is a, a cult of personality there which in his opinion is becoming very dangerous because if you're not in that world and that's all you see, you just see this kind of superficial layer where it's, you know, it's about being on the cover of a magazine and it's about doing all of these things that don't really relate to building a business and it's easy to get distracted by that. And you know, his argument is that he sees increasingly a lot of people just kind of blinded by the media light and not actually thinking about what it takes to build a company which is 
not glamorous and, and not, you know, it's, if you've been there, it's generally awful. But what? rewarding. Um, so that's that's kind of his take on it. Good enough for you to come jump back. Um, do you flip side? Do you feel like you doing these um, articles and searching, doing this information search every day, like has strengthened you to maybe someday build that second venture? It's kind of the idea, to, yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. Pit stop. Um, well, yeah, I, like the the reason I. I found this uh, alluring uh, is that you know when you're a journalist and you're interested in business and particularly in, in startups and entrepreneurship, you know working with a brand like Forbes or, or with any other you know kind of high profile media brand, it just immediately gives you access that you would have never had where you were normal. I'm sorry, I am a normal person, uh, but were you a normal you know 25 year old and not without that brand cachet? And that doesn't mean I'm any smarter or any different. It's just suddenly that brand slapped on you and you can go talk to whoever you want. And that's enormously liberating if you're somebody interested in that world. And, you know, where I can email Mark Cuban or Steve Blank, who was an idol of mine long before you know, I, I became a journalist, and they will email me back. And that is just am that's amazing. And, and there are very few roles that you can take that will allow you to do that. And, and so, when you can interact with that caliber of people, I mean, every day I speak to people who are just so much smarter than me, so much more accomplished than I could ever hope to be, and that's really, really helpful. I know, you know, you're also doing a case study every day, and so I hope in some way that rubs off on me. I have no idea, and I won't know until I try it, um, but I like to think that, you know, there's some value there, sure. How do you build an article? Do you, do you think of the stuff that would be interesting for yourself or for the startup community in general? Or, or how do you go to fish for those things? If, I don't know if it's a secret, but yeah. how, how do you like um, construct it? Because I'm, I'm sure Forbes tries to help young entrepreneurs with all these articles or, or people in the, in the business. How yeah. does that work? So I, would, I was speaking about this earlier with, with Colette. Um, it's very different. Your goals are very different for the magazine and for online. And in the magazine, and, and this goes for any, you know, this goes for probably Fast Company or Wired or, or any other publication that is kind of bifurcated. And that's almost every publication these days that has an online presence and a print presence. So in print, there is a, a tried and true, I don't want to say formula, but there's a, generally a template um, that you don't always have to follow, but it, it you have to at least you know, give lip service to that template and, and understand what the elements are that are needed in, in that story. So if you look at a magazine, there's always going to be certain elements. And if you break that down, it's just, you know, for us, it's, um, you know, you want a lead that draws in the audience, and then you kind of have a nut graph with the numbers, and then you tell the chronology, and then you spin it forward, and that's, and, and that's it. And so you learn that, and obviously you can plug in different elements, but but that's, that's how it works. Yeah. And online, it's kind of a, there's a tension between what I'm interested in um, and what my audience is interested in. And, that, and on the other hand, you know, the, that's what my audience is interested in. The, you know, the, the metric is traffic, it's clicks, it's page views, which is what people are increasingly judged on as journalists. And you know, rather than um, resent that, I think that's a reality that everybody has to deal with. And, and you know, writing punchy headlines and, and trying not to do everything about Apple or, or Google or you know, 10, 10 whatevers that you should pay attention to to be a good leader. But you do have to, you have to keep, you know, you have to strike that balance. And, and often, I find myself kind of at the other end of the spectrum, doing things that are more interesting to me than for my readers. And then you have to kind of you know, bring yourself back and, 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 and try and find things that fit uh, both goals. So it's, it's, not, it's not always a science. It's, yeah. do, you, do you feel media is back, like fallen back or never been there in quantifying or, or really seeing what exactly the readers are reading? Like, I don't know, heat maps or some other tools or, or stuff like this that, that to my understanding the media doesn't really use yet. Um, I, I mean, I don't know about heat maps. Certainly, 
you know, there, there are a, there's a whole set of people who are devoted to monitoring metrics and kind of A-B testing. And, and I think if you're an intermediate organization that doesn't do that, it's, it's in the Stone Age. Right? And increasingly, people are getting smarter and, they're, and they're, they're no longer denying that this is the way that things are going. They're accepting it and they're building production teams that act on it and pay attention. And Forbes has actually done a, a very nice job of doing it. So, you know, I, I'm sure more tools and analytics will come along that will help media publications do a better job of maximizing, you know, their, their eyeballs. But, it, you know, that, that train has long left the station. People get it. And, and if, they, if they don't get it, they're dead. They've already died for the most part. The ones who are surviving are the ones who have figured it out, you know, just in the nick of time. Um, so, yeah, I think we're doing okay at the moment. And, and Forbes, you know, for the record, we basically, in the last three years, I think we've tripled our, our, our readership. You know, so we've gone from 15 million uniques to 50 million uniques in, in less than three years. So, you know, that's a turnaround story. And, and other, mag, I think, you know, the, the Times doesn't have similar metrics. But people are, are starting to figure out, and it's getting a little bit healthier. It's no longer, um, people aren't on the brink of death anymore, I would say. Yeah. JJ, I'd love to talk to you all day, and I'll catch you later. Right now, we have to thank him, and we have our next guest coming up on stage. So thank you very much, JJ. Thanks, Henry.